Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Cabinet Castle, our UK theme park here in Planet Coaster. So last week we were making a splash and this week we'll have you all in a spin as we crack open the Marathon. Right, is that how you say it? Oh yes, welcome to the back end of Buccaneer Bay and we're going to be cramming some kind of a coaster into this really small space that's probably too small for it but hey, this is a park that doesn't have a lot of space to deal with it seems only right they're going to stick something compact in wherever they can and yes, that's what she said <laughs> we're dealing with water as the theme as well so it feels about right that we're going to be playing with this whole Whirlpool Vortex Maelstrom kind of vibe uh, so that's what we've got here and this is the coaster that we're putting in it's a Marathon spinner, uh, I love it and you will be forgiven for thinking that you have seen this layout before uh, I had a custom layout in this space and I wanted to drag in the one from Raygate Lake just to get a feel for the hairpin turn that's here uh, and to see how it was put in and then it turned out that it fitted in really nicely into this space so I was like actually I'm going to upcycle Raygate Lakes instead and that kind of would be true Marason do them off the shelf you can just go and buy them and, and see you later so that's kind of what we're going for here like they've just altered it slightly so what I've done is I've changed some of the heights I have uh, changed some of the banking and some of the uh, profiling stuff just to sort of like give it a bit of a variation but ultimately it would be an off the shelf an off the shelf model and it fits so awesomely in this space and by the way in case you are wondering this whole coaster cluster it's intentional the park boundary would be along this wall here, right? So uh, it's not a big, it's not a big park, particularly as you have the entrance here and it sort of tees off. You would kind of think there'd be an area behind it, but no, this is the park boundary. It is exactly like Portland's Park, which is basically in a field. Uh, so layout of the coaster. Then we've got <laughs> the game still freaking out. I don't know what it is. Um, so we've got the station here, and then you have this uh, block break run here and then of course it goes up the lift hill and these lift hills are ridiculously fast but on the marathons they're like almost launches <laughs> but anyway it comes into its first turn here and then comes into a snake turn and then into its first break run so you want to make your break runs on these coasters really really short because they're only four capacity trains they're going to take about 15 seconds to load so you want to throw as many trains into the circuit as you can so you stand a fighting chance of having some kind of capacity uh, then you're going to come off the break run here into the hairpin in turn uh, which this oh, just took me so long to profile it's like ridiculous but it's so perfect like it's exactly as it should be so i'm i'm digging it i'm down with it uh, into a double up very much inspired by uh, chessington world of adventures on dragon's fury there's your double up uh, and then of course into the break run so the distance in time between here and here is about the same as here to here so it's about even then we come into um a spiral turn and then we come into this s s snaky turn i love this and i mean i loved it in raygate lake so i'm gonna love it here as well uh, then into a break run here and then into the final course so you just got twists and turns and stuff just to make it spin and the break run and then uh oh i just need to check that bit of track and then into the final bit into the final break run this is the maintenance area uh, I have repurposed this actually. This is not exactly the same as Raygate Lakes. Uh, I've changed some of some of the stuff, but ultimately, what I've what I was able to do is recycle and upcycle the stuff from Raygate Lake here. So all of the mechanisms and whatever are already in place uh, and of course we've got chattel toilets coming in here we've got an arcade coming in here and then a supporting ride which is the hyper jump not the ascendance uh, because remember this is a kids park so we're going to go for the smaller of the drop towers in here the queue line i've just sort of like wrapped it around um i don't think i want it too long uh, i don't want to promote people coming on this ride because the throughput's trash so <laughs> uh, by the way guys if in case you were wondering this is a, a smaller episode uh, it's because this is the week i'm moving so i need to almost like throw together an episode so that i can have it out by the time i'm done in fact i'll be moved in by the time this goes out and it's going to be really weird anyway i'm going to carry on building see you in a minute I tell you what, you guys, there is something really special about working in such a small area because it comes to life so quickly, almost to the point where I feel like I'm doing the channel a bit of a disservice because it's been quite a quick process. But then I would thought back to the pioneer episode of Grove and the Gardens. And that was also just as quick. And that was because I've put all of the effort into this area already. This area has already got a personality. This is just a tag on to this. And you'll spot some stuff in this area, by the way, that's slightly different. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and by later, I mean in the final update. Not, not 
this update. So this is the area that we've got going on in here. This is a very different style of pirate. It's still the white stucco pirate, but this is the fort area of the town. I needed a, a reason to have these <laughs> to have these in. Forgive the stuttering, by the way. It's like it when it's paused. There'll be a TMT key item that I've put in the park, and the, my PC just does not agree with it, so unfortunately it is what it is. Um, but I needed a reason for these fort towers to exist, right? So that's what we've gone for here. This is the like the coastal side of the of the town and this is what's going to be protecting it so it's all that white stucco so if we have a look at the station this is the station as it's sitting at the moment and it's going to need all of its details right it needs pirating up it needs guns and it needs uh flags and it needs pirates at the top here and all that sort of stuff it's going to get all that uh, later on but this is the basis of the building. I did have this sandstone completely all the way up and it just felt really claustrophobic. I had enclosed it as well. That also felt claustrophobic. So what I did was I put these arches in and it worked. And I was like, that's fine. I'll just deal with that and leave it as it is. <laughs> I'm going to put the plaster ceiling and stuff in here so it's consistent with the rest of the town as well. And I've also just put in an additional ride booth um, control booth in here as well and that's because putting it here as a solid thing just made it feel so enclosed and I didn't like it so I've put it this side so you'd actually have two probably not that realistic but yeah let's deal with it uh, and at the back of the station here oh, just, they're different colors I need to change that um that feels weird. So out of the back here, uh, I've got these catwalks and stuff coming down just to, to some emergency stop points. Then, of course, you've got the catwalks. And these this is probably the one you're most likely to get evacuated from, this one and then the final break one. But the others do also have all of their spiral stairs, and they do also have the catwalk clutter and stuff on here. So I've done some touching up. The ones in Raygate Lake, as it turns out, weren't that perfect. So I've needed to go back and just do some rework on them, and they have now feel so much better. They probably look no different to the first update. But they are different, fundamentally different. I've supported them slightly differently and uh, and whatever. But I like how this coaster is sitting. Forgive the clutter down here, by the way. This is my palette of stuff that I've used in the area. Ignore that. Um, where, where should we go next? Queue line. So the queue line itself, uh, I've started to put the pirate theming and whatever in just so I know what this is going to feel like. And again, this kind of needs to feel like a cluttered harbour area. That's what we're going for here. So um, there's going to be foliage and there's probably going to be rocks and stuff. So I've just started to put some of the pirate stuff down so I know what space I've got for things. Um, I've also started to put the fence down as well. And uh, no, you don't need a fence that comes around this way uh, because this is well above guest height it's this bit when it comes down to the ground that you need to fence it off by so that's what we're doing here so the fence comes around this way and then it's all sorted this bit here i love 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 how this has turned out this was a pure accident i just wanted to have some kind of a custom fence going on here uh, i started to then put all of the boardwalk uh, the boarding up on here this is just the um the haunted house plank that you find uh, and then I've just put the haunted house beams and these are TMTK bamboo um, piles pillars whatever you call them I think they're only a meter maybe two meters tall and they just ah this is just what I wanted here I thought I was going to keep this open and then I just, this happened and I was like no it's sold <laughs> keep it as it is I like it it's staying so it's staying um what I have done though is I started to put the the natural flooring down here not the natural flooring it's the area flooring down here as well just so I can make sure that it feels right I just need to finish off the mulch and stuff and, and make that uh, make that all make that all a thing in terms of the maintenance area then, so this is the next bit to look at. Uh, so I've kept the catwalk and whatever in from Raygate Lake. That kind of feels like that would come part and package of the, the entire ride when you buy it from Marison, right? Uh, and then I just touched up this area here. Again, Raygate Lake wasn't perfect as it turns out, but I do love. This is one thing I think I did really, really well. Um, and, oh... It's just the it's just the the unit that transfer the transfer track unit because Morrison's are just so unique. I love them, and there was, this was so much fun to like rebuild and repurpose. So uh, yeah, I dig it. It's it's here. But what I've done with this maintenance area is I've tried to hide it from view as much as possible. So we've got the shed that's sitting here, which is hiding it from this queue, and then you've got the toilets, cha cha toilets uh, that are sitting here, um, and then you've got the, the the actual maintenance area that's hidden by a fence, and it's just sort of like hidden completely out of view it feels almost cheating um but this is exactly how dragon's fury at chessington does it so well not exactly dragon's fury is just a fence all the way around and then just one like garden shed but 
yeah, I'm kind of going for that, going for that vibe. Um, and I wasn't too sure about how this exit path, by the way, was going to work down by the adventure. Not adventure. What? That's not even the right word, Chacho. Like, what are you even saying? Say actual words that you mean. Down by the arcade. Um, I didn't... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I didn't know how it was going to work out. But actually, I... I like it i've removed two of them two of the units from here because they were blocking the doorway right so they are uh, out of the way but this just needs some touching up and whatever the one thing that i did notice i didn't do in the other arcade that i think i need to go back and retrofit are all the plug sockets that you'd find on the wall well i was looking at some pictures i'd taken of some of the other um arcades not the brighton pier one but the from actual theme parks there's quite a few exposed plug sockets like a frightening amount. So that's what I need to do. I think I just need to go away, go away and put some more <laughs> plug sockets in. Maybe we'll do an entire episode of plug sockets. <laughs> and I know some of you would still watch it too. <laughs> Anyway, Chacho Toilets. So um, I'm going again for that piratey stucco uh, stuff in here. So what I've got, though, is a privacy screen along here because I wanted to do a different layout on the inside. I'm starting to get a bit bored with having them all of the same identical layout because that's not very realistic. You don't tend to find them identical everywhere you go. So I've put them all along this way. This one's a slightly smaller toilet. This has only got the three cubicles and the disabled cubicle going on in here um but yeah you've got the privacy screen for this uh, for this exact reason here right so uh, we're, we're good to go of course it's going to be male female toilets um and then on the other side i've put in all of the usual stuff so there's your sinks and your mirror and then of course there's your hand dryers that are going on in, in here so the uh the drop tower the hyper jump yeah ascendance is the other one isn't it so the hyper jump uh, uh it's just had some stuff i don't think i'm going to bother theming it um i don't think it needs a theme i think it just needs some pirate stuff plotting around and i'm kind of calling on cues from detonator at thor park on this one because that's got a theme but it's not themed if you like it's just stylized but what i have done and forgive the fact that I've put the construction fences in and not moved the construction fence. I'm not even sorry because they're coming down in the next episode anyway. Uh, I've put in the hydraulic tower here. So you would find these in some capacity. They don't have to be directly next to the right. It could be if you wanted it over here. But you tend to find them around this kind of this kind of area. It needs finishing off and it needs like some detailing and stuff put onto it. But I've extended the pad to accommodate for the fact that we need to have some kind of service area for this, uh, for this ride. And then... The last thing to really show you in this area, um, because apparently I've managed to fill an entire update with this, even though it's a really small area, are these tiles on the floor. Now, channel member Noct gave me the idea of doing this in some stuff that he shared with me uh, on Discord. And I was like, I love that style. So what I've done is I've, I've taken the inspiration. And these are actually the, um, uh, the adventure panels that have got the face on it turned upside down and then colored blue and so what i've then put <laughs> it started off in here the other way around where they split off into a v one to the arcade and one to the entrance it just looked like a big y and i was like that just looks so crappy i just no so what i then did was actually face them into each other and they became a bit of a roundabout thing um and then there's a central, the central um, feature in the middle here. So actually, they just follow it round. But I didn't want them to be continuous. I wanted them to be three separate, three separate things. And that's also what I've done here, and I've also what I've done here too. So I'm just bringing this entire thing through. And actually, if you look at how they are with the, um... oh, I said we weren't going to talk about this in this update. Oh well, spoiler alert. Um... <laughs> Soz, if you look at how these uh, how these fit with the actual flooring, I think they actually look all right. And I'm all right with this because it now breaks up this area a little bit. I thought in the last one, this was a bit like too exposed and it was too repetitive. This breaks it up quite nicely. So yeah, I'm all right with that. I don't think we've got anywhere else in the park that needs breaking up just yet. So that's what I've gone for. That's what I've gone for here. And I love just how they how they go around in like a in a triangle. So anyway, this is how it's looking from the top. Uh, I reckon I'm going to go and fight with the stuttering some more. Finish this up and I'll see you in a mo. 
Alright then, you guys, the construction fences have come down and the stamp has come out. It's done for now. <laughs> and I tell you what, given that I thought this was going to be a bit of a throwaway episode of just stick a coaster in whilst you're moving and it'll be fine. I actually really like how this turned out. Like, this is totally worth the effort and it just sits so comfortably just in that little corner at the back end of the park. There it is, a little spinning coaster. And actually, it feels quite right from the guest view as well. Like, when you walk into the area and this is, this is what you've got, this plaza is just so much better than I ever thought it was going to be. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. What more can you uh, can you say? So let's give you a quick tour. We're going to start over here with the hyper jump um, because I've done some work around this area. I decided not to theme it, as you already know, uh, but I also decided to have a slightly bigger hydraulic house. When I did a little bit of research, um, it turns out that the hyper jump in game is actually a little bit smaller than the real life counterpart, so therefore it meant that the um, hydraulic house was ever so slightly too small so i've actually made it bigger and it now it now sits there just there <laughs> i mean i could have put some kind of pirate theming on here and whatever and maybe i'll come back and do it because it feels like this park might have made that effort but for now it's just blue and orange and it's sat there and we're going to deal with it <laughs> so the maintenance area for the coaster is sitting so nicely next to the toilets here like this area just feels right this is just exactly as this would be for this kind of coaster the maintenance area is just there on show but it's themed so it's all right and inside here i have also just done touching up and, and fine touches and stuff in here i mean it's just a it's just a shed full of stuff really you don't really have intense intense machinery and whatever inside there uh, inside the spinning coaster maintenance sheds and then of course got toilets here so this has been pirated out and i like this is how this is i mean i think what kind of finishes it is the broken brick TK, TK, TMTK stuff that you can get. Um, it just brings it to life. It just gives it its own its own little personality. So, uh, yeah, lots of um, more TMTK pieces on here, like the signs and stuff for all theme makers toolkit and, and, and whatever. But I like how this is. And then inside, we've got just touch-ups that's happened. I've, again, I'm keeping the toilets nice and simple because, well, toilets are quite simple in the grand scheme of things, right? So... That's just what we're doing. These signs, by the way, so getting overused. <laughs> like, they are everywhere. <laughs> so, totally worth it. I'm attached to something. The camera's attached to something. There we go. Uh, right, so let's now have a look at the rest. Uh, the queue line, I've kept, again, relatively simple. Lots of overgrowth going on in here. So, plenty of palm trees and plenty of stuff going on here. I've started to bring some of the outside trees in. Um, because it felt like they may have kept some of the trees. So, like, you'll see some of the trees along here and then uh, the ex the external trees. I haven't done any of the external yet so you'll see that it's just a couple of placeholder trees just to give it a bit of depth to the sight line but I haven't done anything in terms of uh, outside just yet. But what I have done though is, as, as I said, the construction fences have, have all come down. I've finished off all of the um, foliage and I've just made all of this make sense. And actually, it's all right. Like from the boat ride, you still can't see the road and you can see the rest of the um, uh, you can see the rest of the ride and stuff. So it feels like a coherent area. It's only when you get up to this level or maybe at the guest level that you actually notice there's a service road there. So that's it's all right actually. Like. I'm I'm okay with I'm okay with that. It's it's obscured enough. It didn't need the massive fence that was there. And in fact, the massive fence that I did put there originally created a barrier, and it just didn't feel right. So took it down, and uh, we're good to go. And then, as I said, this is the queue line that that we've got going on, nice and simple. I do need to pack the park with guests just to understand how it's all going to come together and how the guests are going to flow around the park. I have a feeling because of the prestige and stuff, they're all going to cluster around this area, particularly this coaster here. This is the highest prestige one with the lowest capacity. So I'll test that out privately and, and I'll let you know in future episodes how that goes. So the arcade that we've got going on here, um, I did not like this to start with. I thought it was going to be completely out of place. It was going to look awful. It was going to just be a sore thumb and it was going to obstruct the, tra the station. I just didn't know whether that was going to work, but actually it does. It does. And it sits there. It feels like it might be like a bit of a temporary unit. The guys, dude, you just walk through the wall. You've got two doors and you've chosen to walk through the wall. Go figure. Um, 
Yeah, so it feels like it might be a temporary structure. They could kit it out and make it a gift shop or whatever if they wanted to. Um, or in fact, it might have been a gift shop at some point. You'll notice, by the way, that I've chosen not to put ride photos in this park. That's a deliberate choice. Um, I've not spoken about it up until now. Nobody's actually noticed, but I have just deliberately decided not to put them in for reasons. It's a kid's park and, and stuff, um, and they probably wouldn't have invested in that kind of technology yet. But anyway, inside the actual arcade, just thrown a few games around um these were already in the previous update so i've just pirated this up really and um just made it a thing and it just sits there quite nicely it's more appealing from the outside and that's the idea of it it's supposed to be like that it's supposed to look better from the outside than it does on the inside so that's what it looks like through there so the station i have done again lots of pirating um going on i did some research in how the roof on this area would work and it would actually be a pitched roof so you didn't have water collecting. I know I've used flat roofs on the other parts, but this would be a pitched roof. And you'd have like uh, internal guttering and stuff along here that would make all of this drain off and stuff. And it would be, the guttering would be inside the walls and it would be well hidden and stuff. It wouldn't necessarily need to be on show. So that's why you can't see it. And then I've just attached the cannons and stuff to the... Um, uh, to the actual roof itself, so it looks like it's it's under uh, under defence. Uh, and then inside the station, you're whoop, what am I attached to? There we go. Uh, so inside the station, you'll see then that there's just a lot of touching up that's happened. Uh, this has now got its piratey type stuff. I didn't want to go overkill in this one because remember, we are still a relatively budgeted park. This isn't Fantasia Land. We're not going massive on the theming, but it just needs to be realistically themed and uh, plausible. In, in its theming. So that's what we've got going on uh, going on here. I still love these fences, by the way. I'm still so chuffed with this fence. Uh, it's like the highlight of the episode, and I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> so then we've got this this area here. Uh, so this was the maintenance area, and yeah, this is this has come together quite nicely. Now it's got its overgrowth and stuff in. It's just it comes to life when when you do when you do that bit. So uh, this this is all cool. I have decided not to put any kind of effects on here. Um, I was tempted because I wanted the prestige of this one to be slightly higher so it competed with the other coasters. But actually, this wouldn't be a star coaster. It wouldn't be, particularly with the ones that are coming. Like, there's the Plumple Pop coaster. There's what we call the star coaster. Members of the channel already know what that coaster is because you've seen spoilers. Um, so, yeah, I don't think this is this actually needs any higher prestige going on. Thank you very much. Um, right, so other things that I said I was going to do. I did promise in the last episode that I was going to finish off this gift shop, so that's exactly what I've done. Uh, so we've got just some touches up and whatever on the outside, and then on the inside here we now have a proper floor, uh, and I've just done all of the bits uh, along here and making it all uh, making it all make sense inside here. So as we look at it from the outside, this is now the town. Loving it, like it's just good depth of sight lines, and when the plump pop area uh, is all in the background, it's going to look good it's going to look even richer and even uh, even deeper and so brings me on to the last thing to update you on and you probably have already spotted it because i have already shown you in this update but it is the main entrance area now has some sort of something going on it's not finished um but i felt like for me to be able to get a feel for how the park was was looking from like this sort of sightline, I needed to do the bits that were going to be in here. So it started to get its personality in this area, primarily around this bit here. I wanted it to be split level coming down to the water so that it wasn't a full risk for kids. And I also wanted to have somewhere that was quite nice to sit down, kind of inspired a little bit by Wild of You Muse, to be honest. Uh, so I've just put a load of picnic benches and stuff along here. A low fence to stop push chairs, wheelchairs, etc. falling into the water, but not kill kids and people because you're going to be sitting here and not running around. So your risk of falling into the water is actually lower. And then I've just put the... Um, uh, the flower beds and stuff in here. So this is the cast stone from the Ghostbusters pack just in here. I thought I'd rather use this than use the um, the normal stone or this stone here. I just wanted to just have something different to break up the sight line. Uh, and then I've just put in some kind of flowers and whatever just in a, in a bit of a pattern and then made it an actual flower bed so it's just to give it a bit of just give it a bit of it life and, and random variation. And then I just put this now I've, I don't know if this is a pagoda or a pergola. You're going to need to tell me in the comments because I have no idea. But it's this thing anyway. And the reason for this is I wanted it to have a split. I saw the idea in uh, Wallaby Holland and I was like, actually, I quite like that as a as an idea. Particularly when it go down to the, goes down to the water and it sort of fences off this area without fencing it off. So that's what I've done here. 
uh, it's and it's in. And I like it, actually. It's just a stucco beam. Same beam, just turned upside down. Um, and then you can get this this kind of effect. So, happy days. And then I've also started to put in some flowers and whatever in front of the, or around the uh, merry-go-round that we've got here. And also the chair swing that we've got here. I don't think I'm done with this yet. I think I want to do some more flowers. I might put the, the tulips in here as a different colour just to give it some, like, texture variation. And, of course, this one here and stuff that isn't done. But... This is just me getting a feel for how the area is going to look, and uh, yeah, I'm alright with it. I have also put down some bins, benches, and uh, lamp posts again, just to make it feel, uh, make it feel right. But I do need to, as I said, throw a load of guests into the into the park and make sure that it's all working. As we want it to. So this area might actually become too cluttered and I might need to make some changes. Uh, and of course, I haven't done this bit here because the coaster that's coming in this area, uh, which I'm very careful because if <laughs> there is a spoiler, you can see Plomp will pop there. But there is a spoiler if you look at the top of the screen as to what the coaster may be. So, uh, <laughs> got to be careful. Uh, so, I've not done this bit here because the coaster that's coming in this area uh, will have a bridge that's coming across here. And I need to be able to do that bridge to know whether I need to put a bridge here as well to cut across into the area. So, I need to let that area play out before I start doing all of this is what, is what, I'm, trying to, is what I'm trying to say. But for now, this is how this... Uh, this area is going to look. So coming back over to the coaster because this is the uh, this is the episode we're supposed to be focusing on. Uh, there is no name yet because the vote won't have happened because I'm recording this the week that I move. So by the time this goes out, I'll already be there and probably back online. So I'll be doing some catch up, but this will already be scheduled. What I'm trying to say is any of the missed votes, we're going to bank up. So I do still need your suggestions, though, uh, for the dark ride. So, remember the dark ride over here? There we go. The dark ride over here. Uh, it's a western dark ride, and it has no name. And you guys are about to help me out with that, please. <sighs> See what you come up with, because your names might actually start to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> influence the actual theme right so i think we're going to go for a ride um thank you so much for getting to the end of the episode i really do appreciate it of course if you like the episode then you know what to do there's a like and a comment and a subscribe button Ten thousand subscribers remember we're doing the tmtk free park uh, it's going to be a no tmtk park and we're nearly there so yes we can probably get across the line if you actually subscribe and stay subscribed um so i have listened to your feedback with the spinning coasters you guys didn't like the track view or the weird view we are going to do seat view on this one so i'm just going to warn you this one's on you <laughs> thank you so much guys have a good one see you soon Bye bye